Pereira. Pereira! Oh, you beauty! What a headshot! What a headshot! Hello and welcome back to Onto the Ball. I'm your host, Scott Nicol, and I'm joined, as always, by Travis Morgan. Uh, James O'Brien sends his apologies. He's a bit busy tonight, so he cannot join me to celebrate Liverpool being back, baby. <laughs> Travis, <laughs> Travis, you are absolutely quaking in your boots. I, am. I can tell you're a different person on the group chat. <laughs> Liverpool have won two in a row. So, Clean sheets to boot. I don't know about you, but I can just smell something cooking with Cody Gakpo, Darwin Nunes, Mo Salah. There's just something clicking. There's something confident. There's something familiar. I keep using that word familiar. It just feels familiar. And I don't know what else we can say about my boy, Bicetic. Man. Did you see that turn that he done? It keeps getting played over and over on Twitter. I did see the um, turn. When Van Dyke played it out from the back and he just left the the Newcastle midfielder for dead and, and it led to our, our goal for Gakpo for that second. Um, this feels weird. This is why we created the podcast. Like I've said before, to celebrate Man United wins, Liverpool wins, and we've had nothing to shout about really for three, four months since the channel's been up and running, but it smells, it feels like we've turned a corner. Is that the way you see it? Or am I just getting a bit carried away? No, like, no, I think you're right, to be honest. Like, in terms of the actual performance itself, you did have shaky parts. I think you looked shakier when you were playing against 10 men, to be honest. You made a blistering yeah, start. Yeah, was wasn't it? Yeah, you made a blistering start to the game. And the pass from Trent is is just typical of what he's all about, if I'm honest with you. It's a, it's a perfect pass. And, Nun and Nunes took the goal brilliantly. The, the, the touch is incredible and the, and the power on the finish as well. He just was not messing around. It was just head down, foot through it and just not hope for the best, but he just made sure that the keeper had no chance of saving it with the way he's hit it. And it was a great start. And I think from then it could have been three or four. The second goal, like you said, beautiful pass from Salah, great vision and Gakpo took his, took his goal while he was in the areas. And like, I think now... In terms of the interchange between Nunes and Gakpo, and, and like you said, you don't want to get carried away because it's only a couple of games, but I think the understanding starting to cre be created a little bit more in terms of the movement, like they're popping up in, in the right areas. You can see Go Gakpo is getting into areas that, that are more threatening in terms of goal scoring now. Like he, his timing's a lot better. He's still dropping off. He's still receiving it. He's still picking it up on the half turn, but he's getting more like what I would call clear cut chances now because of the timing and, and things like that. But for me, two things, Van Dyke coming back into the team. And, and I know you lot have waxed lyrical about Matip and Joe Gomez and stuff like that, but Van Dyke's just a, a, another level. He is an absolute, he's absolutely another level. And what I mean by is another level is that the, the sort of assured nature he gives the, the rest of the team, like, with him there, it's like having it's like having your big brother around. Do you know what I mean? You just feel looked mm -hmm. after. That's the that's the impact he has. Like when it when he's not there, you just feel that little less secure. You feel like things could go wrong. Even if they don't, you feel like they can. With Van Dyke, there's just no sign of that happening. Just he makes everything look so easy. He's just chilling. And like as much as Newcastle had huff, huffed and puffed. You, it was never serious. Like Van Dyke just always had the game at arm's length. That's the first thing. And the second thing is Fabinho and Hendo coming back in. Like it's just giving that little bit more security that you were looking for. Even when Thiago comes back into the team, I, I can't see or into the squad. I can't see him necessarily starting straight away because the balance of the team just looks a little bit better for what you need at this particular time. Like you've got the shield with Fabinho, the Hendo doing that little bit of box to box and the Bicetic. Like there's not much creativity in there, but you didn't need that at this particular time. You needed solidarity. You needed players that were going to just get it and give it to those front guys and just let them do the rest. So yeah, it does feel like you turned a corner. Klopp, you got to give him credit. Do you know what I mean? He's changed it. He's not stuck with the same thing. He's gone with a more defensive midfield in terms of the setup. 
similar players, but he's just given them different instructions and it's working a treat. So long may that continue for Liverpool. And like you said, they've put themselves back into the mix for the top four. Um, it's a good point about Thiago. I'm not sure if he would be a shoe in to come straight back in the way we played the last two games anyway. But yeah, I agree. Like you say, Jürgen Klopp is, he's switched up. He's got rid of Naby Keita for a start. Uh, I've said before, I wouldn't even have him in the team. The guy's leaving in three or four months. To me, he's already left the club. But Van Dijk, yeah, it's it's a perfect analogy of having your big brother there. You can see them. He doesn't, when something's happened in defence, you don't even see him shouting and screaming. You see him just give the death stare to someone as That's though, it. be better, do better. And, yeah. and they almost just think, yeah, I will, I'll try. Um, everyone rises. Everyone rises a level. Yeah. Everyone goes like you say, we've just got this familiar feeling back now with Van Dijk, with Hendo, with Fabinho. Um, and I, yeah, I agree. The midfield isn't the most creative, but in a perfect Klopp team, it doesn't need to be. It mm. needs to be the, the industry, the the ball recyclers, the winning it, helping out the defence and then letting the front three do what, the damage. what, yeah, what you want them to do. Um, and look, we're million miles off Salah, Firmino and Mane levels, but it's so encouraging just to see Gakpo getting a couple of goals now. Nunes getting back on the, the score sheet. And like you say, they were interchanging so much. Nunes would pop up in the middle, then he'd be on the left, then Gakpo would swap over. Um, like you say, going down to 10 men, it almost ruined the game. I, yeah. I'm not sure we could adjust our tactics to play against 10 men to really take advantage of it. And, you know, that is a bit on clock, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to moan. We got the three points and that's all I care about. But the game, it just ended up a bit like a basketball game, end to end. We'll, if you do score one, we'll probably score another two anyway. Yeah. Um, but as it turned out, there wasn't even any more goals. But I was delighted again to see Jota come off the bench and Firmino nutmegging people for fun, getting the crowd up. It was, <laughs> it was a joy to watch. And yeah. I don't know how Jota didn't score, but this yeah. is going to this is going to turn into a real problem for Klopp now. You add Diaz back into the mix. You've got a fit Jota, a fit Firmino to go with Gakpo, Nunes and Salah. And all of a sudden, we're, we're looking fit and firing and it's going to be a problem keeping all six of them happy. Mm. But I want to reserve a special mention to Alisson in goals. If you think of the last few games, he's saving these one-on-one -on -one chances and it's like he doesn't even get the credit anymore because we just expect him to pull off these one-on-one -on -one saves. And there'll be a bit of danger. And it's like, oh, yeah, Alisson saved it like it's nothing. But if you actually watch, I've seen a comp compilation of his saves in the last few games on Twitter. And it's like, the guy is, if he's not the best in the world, I'd like to know who is. Um, it's a bit of a, a keeper homage tonight. We've just mentioned De Gea on the Man United uh, episode and now mentioning Alisson. He's... I dread to think where Liverpool would be this season if it wasn't for Alisson. He's, he's probably going to get our player of the year, to be honest. Yeah, he was brilliant. And like I said, it's just his presence, like the, the way he he just takes so long and the, the spread in the goal, like he, he just makes the goal so small and he just leaves it so late to go down with just like sometimes keepers move so early, they just make the striker's mind up, but he just leaves it so late and he just makes it so difficult for strikers to score one-on-ones. I don't, I don't think I've seen a keeper save as many one-on-ones as him. So yeah, he's been in fantastic form, even when your team hasn't been, he has. So um, it's always a positive when your goalkeeper's saving and giving you a chance in games and, and the more clean sheets, the merrier. Like I said, you, you've kept two in a row now, got a huge game tomorrow. I think you're going to go into that game full of confidence now. It's going to be interesting to see if Nunes sort of passes a fitness test. I know he got a little bit of a knock before the end of the game. But I think he's, he's going training. to... I think they'll give him every chance. I think he'll do a little fitness test before the game tomorrow. Um, but he's going to be important with his pace um, that he starts tomorrow, to be fair. And I think... The thing is, I, think, I don't think you'll risk him because the second leg... I think Real Madrid can be got at. Do you know what I mean? In terms of they'll give you space in behind and stuff like that. It's, it's an interesting game. Real Madrid aren't flying in the league. Um, it's all open, to be fair. I don't think Liverpool are out of it by any stretch. If you asked me a few weeks ago, I would have said there's absolutely no chance that you're winning. But 
like you said, the players are coming back at the right time now. You've got good options off the bench in forward areas. Van Dijk's come back. He's probably the most important return. So you've got every chance. Uh, I'm going to have nowhere to hide soon, Travis, in the group chat. Because once Luis Diaz is back, I can't think of anyone that's out injured. Thiago maybe, but when when you've got the badge by Setic playing like he is, we haven't even missed him. Um, but it's all good. On to the, the, yeah, the game tomorrow night. Again, we just spoke about the problems Ten Hag's got picking a team for Thursday night and a team for the cup final. Jürgen Klopp tomorrow is the same. It, it would not surprise me to see any of them front five selected in the front three. Uh, Firmino could get the nod. Jock could get the nod on the left or in the centre if Nunes does make it. But Nunes has been pictured training today. So as far as I know, it was just a scare and he's in line He's available to be selected. Um, but yeah, being at home against Real Madrid, you know, it's written in folklore that Liverpool always like to be home on the second leg. So we we know what we've got to do, but this will be a little bit different. Um, and Real Madrid, you know, they're, they're dangerous. No matter whether you're the favourites or not, we're the favourites tomorrow night. Amazingly, even though Real Madrid beat us in 2018 when we were the favourites, beat us last year when we're favourites, and then over two legs in 2020, I think it was, we're, we're always the favourites. And I don't know why, because Real Madrid, they just know what to do. They know how to get the job done. They're a threat to anyone on the day, regardless of what the league table looks like with Barcelona running away with it. But even if we could get a, a result tomorrow, 1-0, 2-0, a clean sheet would be amazing. It still wouldn't be game over. I'd still be going into the Bernabeu and thinking... We've got a job on our hands. Yeah. Because they've, like you say, they've just got so many players that can cause you problems. But I know, well, I think it's been reported that Chua Many and Cruz are both out injured. Benzema's still injured. So I don't know if he'll be back for it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful. And we really need to stay in the Champions League, really, because it's all we've got left to fight for. If you're going far in the Champions League, that confidence will emanate onto the pitch in the Premier League. And you know what yeah. it's like when you build, get a habit, a winning habit, the confidence grows. I do worry if we go out against Real Madrid, it will drain the confidence and we'll finish the league poorly, to be honest. Yeah, it's a huge tie. And like you said, the, the fans are sort of hanging their hat on this from now to the end of the season. If you can get a run from now to the end of the season in the Champions League, I think it will sort of re-galvanise re the season and re-galvanise the crowd. And it gives you something to look forward to from between now and May. Um, so, yeah, it's an important game. It's a huge game. I think you'll need everyone sort of available and rearing to go. And like you said, you've got every chance. Liverpool have always been good in Europe, especially when the back's against the wall, chips are down, everyone expects a comfortable Real Madrid win. It's not going to be that easy. And I think... Ancelotti will know that going into the game that he needs the Real Madrid will need to be on their A game if they want to get any sort of result tomorrow. Because I expect Liverpool to start the game fast, start the traps like they did against Newcastle, maybe try and get an only goal and settle a few nerves and and try and beat Real Madrid with the intensity. Because like you said, technically Real Madrid are ahead of you, but in terms of that intensity, the crowd and what the crowd can bring at Anfield, it is like a twelfth man. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good game, it'll be a good watch. I expect to see a few goals in the game, to be honest. I think there will be a goal, a few goals in the game and it will set a poise the second leg very nicely. I take it you're tuning in to watch it then? I'll be watching that game, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll return the, the favour to you, Channel 5 Thursday night. <laughs> the Man United-Barcelona <laughs> game. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's a coincidence as well that, that Salah seems to have come alive the, the last couple of games as well. And it's because you've got another two in the front three doing damage now. So he was really struggling in January when Gakpo was in the middle and Oxlade Chamberlain was on the left. You could see them doubling up on Salah. He was getting no change out of anyone. Gakpo was still finding his feet. But now as soon as Gakpo and Nunes are getting into a rhythm, playing themselves into a bit of form, Gakpo getting used to how Liverpool play, Salah's come alive. And that was always the greatest asset of Liverpool. If you can stop Salah, Mane would give you problems on the left-hand side and vice versa. So it's it seems to all be coming good clicking. at the right time. It's clicking. Um, and as we've always said, things can turn around quick, can't they? 
you're never as bad as you think you are and you're no. never as good as you think you are that's it no, um on. but yeah so we'll be back probably thursday friday to see what happened in europe during the week and to go over the the weekend's ball where Liverpool are away to Crystal Palace on a Saturday night. I've got a party that night. I'm absolutely wounded. I'm going to miss it. Um, but I'll be for sure tuning in to the cup final. Travis, thanks for sharing the joy of another Liverpool three points with me. It means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to you too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. I'm not doing that often, so... Enjoy, <laughs> yeah. enjoy it while you can enjoy it while you can definitely this season it would have been different the last four years but <laughs> um guys if you made it this far and you like what you hear don't forget to smash the like and the subscribe if you're new to the channel myself travis and james ob will join you on the next episode have a great week everyone have a great week trav you too mate cheers guys see you later